Freezing yeast allows you to store it for years, so you'll always have the right yeast on hand for your next brew day. I'm going to show you the entire process and attempt to demonstrate that this really works by reviving a yeast that I froze over three years ago. This is my frozen yeast bank. These are my lager yeasts. These are my ale yeasts. Let's see what we've got in here. Okay, we've got California lager. Ah, Oktoberfest, nice. Munich lager. And then, oh, so many ale yeasts. So many. Oh, Ringwood, this is one of my favorites. And these have been around for a while. 820, that's August 2020. Now frozen in here are approximately 20 billion yeast cells. And I'm gonna show you how to do this, step by step, what you need to do to create your own frozen yeast bank. I have 17 different yeast strains in my freezer that have been there for years, and you can do it too. But first, let's discuss what's the advantage of frozen yeast, because I used to do something quite different to this, which was to overbuild starters and then steal a bit of the yeast and, well, put it in the fridge in a mason jar. And as long as I used it within a few months, it was generally okay. But frozen yeast lasts for years. At least I hope so, we'll, we'll find out in a moment. So before I show you how to do it, let's take this yeast now and do something with it. Try to bring it back to life. Now, look, 20 billion cells is not gonna be enough for most beers. So we do need to make a starter. So I'm going to build a starter with this guy, leave it spinning for a couple of days, then crash it and decant it, and we'll see how much yeast we actually have. So to do that, I have everything I need right here. So I've got a Bellaminer flask, this is a, a one litre flask, sanitised already. And in here, I have some canned wort, and this is equivalent to canned wort that you can buy off the shelf, like proper starter for example, but I made it myself just from DME and water. Check out my video on that if you want to see how to do it, link in the description. All right, let's do this. Lid off. Going to use a funnel for convenience. Let's give it a spray with some star sand. In that goes, and then top off with water till I get to about one litre. Now, my yeast is still frozen, but these things don't stay very frozen for long. Bit of uh, body heat should sort this out. It's starting to defrost now. Let's put it straight in here. Got my stir bar. Let's set this guy on its way. So we'll check on this guy in a few days, but in the meantime, let me show you how to freeze some yeast. Right now, everything I'm about to show you, I just took it verbatim from homebrewnotes.com to shout out to them. And I've been using this process for years. Now I can't just freeze yeast as is. When I take my yeast from the fridge, it's a slurry. It's fine to sit in there for a few months. But if I freeze yeast directly, that will form ice crystals and those ice crystals will potentially rupture the yeast cell walls, killing them off. So we need to create something called a cryopreservative that we're gonna mix in with the yeast in order to protect it when it's frozen. To do that, well, we need some glycerin. I'm using some vegetable glycerin and we're gonna make our cryopreservative using 25% of glycerin and then 75% of water. I have a one pint mason jar here in which to do this in. So let's measure it out. All right, that's more or less 75 milliliters. And then we're going to add in 225 milliliters of water. Now, unfortunately, in order for this to become cryopreservative, I need to put it under pressure. And to do that, I have a pressure canner. This might be the thing that you don't have. I picked one up for about 100 bucks on Amazon which uh, that's kind of a lot if you're just using it to freeze yeast. But I do also use this for my yeast starter process as well. So I'm getting good use out of it. What I'm going to do, put this in here. I already have some water in here to create some steam. I'm going to heat this up, get it to 15 PSI and hold it for 10 minutes. Once it's done that, 
I will then let it cool back down to ambient temperature and then we can move on to the next stage. Well, as you might be able to deduce from my change of clothes, it's the next day now. This thing got real hot. I left it and uh, decided I didn't really want to risk opening it up. So let's do that now. There it is, my cryopreservative. Yeah, it's created a good seal as well. There we go. Now, I don't know of another way to create this cryopreservative other than using this beast. Um, but perhaps there is another way. If you know of one, let me know in the comments. But once you've made this, it's going to be good for a number of batches. You can actually keep this around for a good long time and just reuse it every time you want to freeze some yeast. So now it's time for the main event, actually doing this, actually freezing the yeast. Uh, now, what I would normally do is I would overbuild a starter, use most of that yeast in whatever batch I'm brewing, and then just keep a little bit extra of the yeast slurry and use that to freeze. But I'm going to actually just take a packet of yeast that I have right now and freeze whatever is in here. I wouldn't normally do it that way, but this is just a good way to show you how this works. And I'm going to be using Imperial Yeast Flagship AO7. This is such a good, versatile strain, it'll be handy to have it. I'm not sure I'm going to need it very often, but it will be nice to have a backup in my freezer just in case I don't have a fresh pouch available. So here are the things you're going to need in addition to some yeast, either a new packet or the remains of an overbuilt starter and the cryopreservative. Those things are some test tubes. Now these are 15 milliliter test tubes just made of plastic. This is where I'm going to be freezing everything in. Um, I'm going to make 10 vials worth. So I've got 10 of these. I bought them in a pack of 50 off Amazon. Then I've got a syringe as well. This syringe is a six milliliter capacity syringe, which is perfect. I also have this test tube holder, which is a nice to have. Don't really need that, but it makes everything stand up great. Also, I have a, another mason jar, another pint mason jar, which I'm going to put the yeast into and it's wide mouth, so it's going to be easy to access. And I have isopropyl alcohol. This is 91%. Okay, so first off, let's get the yeast into this jar. Have some star sand spray here just to sanitize things. You get some star sand. You get some star sand. And now the mixture is, I'm going to want six milliliters of the yeast along with six milliliters of the cryopreservative. We'll start with the yeast. Cryopreservative. Now you see I've got plenty of cryopreservative left for future batches. I also have quite a lot of yeast left. I could probably have done another 10 vials uh, or I could just use this in a starter to keep this in my fridge for a few months. Now freezing the yeast is a two-step process and I've just done step one which is to combine the yeast with cryopreservative and uh, give it a thorough shake. I could just throw this in the fridge right now, but there is an extra stage I like to take, which will slow down the freezing of the yeast. And to do that, I'm using my isopropyl alcohol. So what I like to do here is, well, I've already done it. So, so let me show you. Here we go. What I've got here, simply a bit of plastic Tupperware with some isopropyl alcohol already in here. It's already cold because come straight out of my freezer and I'm just going to throw these test tubes in here and I'm going to put this back in my freezer and leave it for about two days and at that point these yeast files should be frozen then I can take them out of here label each vial as to what's in there and then just store them in my freezer until I need them But did my three-year-old yeast come to anything? Why, yes. Yes, it did. Look at that yeast cake on the bottom there. I've just crashed this for a day or so. And this is some usable yeast slurry. If I wanted even more yeast cells in this slurry, I might have opted to put two vials in next time for something that's this old. 
But if you want to make a yeast starter and make it quickly, well, there's a whole process on how to do that that makes it super simple. And you can find that right here.